What's up everybody, Pumpkin here. So new patches here and Hyper Thin Nilfgaard got nerfed. Not really. Uh, so in the patch notes, Fire Scorpions went down from four to three. And that seems like a big nerf, but the reality is typically when you play it uh, via portal, uh, one of them would die and the other one would live. And yeah, it doesn't really matter if it's at three or four because you would typically tourney just it and a six or a seven, or I guess it's a seven or an eight. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, so they're still very good. Um, I would like to say the invocation is insane now. Uh, this card is probably going to be auto included in Nilfgaard for as long as it gets nerfed. Uh, card's really, really good. Uh, we are seeing, surprisingly, Karanthi Heatwave in the meta right now. Uh, I'm playing this in a few decks, and it's actually pretty decent. The flexibility on it is quite nice. Uh, in theory, it's worse than Curse of Corruption because it can't kill or it can't kill immune units, and it's one p more expensive if you are killing a tall unit. Uh, with that said, being able to remove an artifact or banishing a T-Bor if your opponent plays like a greedy T-Bor on one or two in a hyper thin list, planning on a siring back into the deck, or just uh, killing an engine against Northern Realms, it's quite good. Uh, flexibility is really nice, and yeah, it's pretty good. You will see this card from time to time. So this is a hyper thin deck. Uh, it's not really a new concept. It was very popular last patch. And it's actually better this patch. Because, well, Invocation is bonkers. Um, there was a point where I was running Spear Tip in my Vampire deck. And I had to cut it. Because, well, they just Invocation my Spear Tip and then play it. And I lose. Because that's a 24 point swing. So, yeah. You gotta be careful. Invocation is gonna see a ton of play. Uh, and... Calvi is surprisingly the best leader for this uh, because what you do is this deck does thin to zero. Um, technically, it over thins uh, because we do have Calvi, but with Yennefer's Invocation, we put an extra card into our deck and then we pull that card back out with Calvi. That's kind of the idea. Um, so I'll go through the list super, super quickly. It's nothing new, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. Uh, portals for thinning and for your Nausicaa and your Fire Scorpion. Roaches for thinning. Yennefer Invocation is a new power play that Hyper Thin now has access to. Tibor. Um, Tibor is obviously your bread and butter. I would like to say there is a chance that we start seeing this card instead of Tibor. Uh, the reason I say this is because Hyperthin is a tier 1 deck, it is very good, and one of the best ways to counter it is tall removal, and one of the best tall removals in the game at the moment is actually Professional, uh, because Zarthisius is a 5, pulls out T-Bor, and it pumps it to 18. Uh, Professional is able to hit that 18 with zero lineup, which means if you're playing any deck and you have Professional in your deck, you can kill your opponent's Arthisius because it's never their final play, right? Because their three power plays are Arthisius, Yennefer, and uh, Vilgefortz into the T-Bor. Um, Vilgefortz into the T-Bor is typically the final play, which means Arthisius is either the third to last play or second to last play, which means you do not need to have last say to uh, professional your opponent's uh, Zarthisius. So with that in mind, there's actually a chance we start seeing Imperial Golem over T-Bor because... Zarthisius into Imperial Golem, while it is two points fewer, uh, it is a 16, which is out of professional range, unless your opponent is playing Ethne, which right now you don't really want to play professional in Ethne just because you can't call the Forest it, and call the Forest is kind of an auto-include card. Um, so yeah, you do lose six points overall, right? Because Tibor, the difference between Tibor and Imperial Golem is two times the three proc, so you're losing six points overall. But if it means that one of your cards doesn't get professional, well... That's kind of a big deal. Not to mention you get two extra P to work with, and that could be significant. So do keep that in mind. If you're seeing a lot of professional, I would suggest dropping T-Bor for Imperial Golem. Uh, those extra 2P, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, you can upgrade Experimental Remedy. You can swap out Peter. You can... Yeah, I would probably say swap out Peter for a Sire. Uh, if you do want to make that change. Vilgefort, very good card. Uh, nice finishers, Arthisius. All three of these cards are kind of uh, the, the reason why you thin uh, so aggressively so that you can get a lot of value out of these cards. Marching Orders for thinning, Meno for thinning, uh, Vigo for thinning with your Impera Brigade. Cynthia! So this is a card that we haven't really seen much play in, but 
well, we're in a meta where hyper thin is a thing, and yeah, this card kind of counters uh, your opponent's hyper thin strategy. Uh, putting a card into your opponent's deck is going to make it much harder for them to thin to zero, and in some cases, they won't be able to do it whatsoever. Uh, if you play Cynthia in round three against a Calvite deck, uh, they can pull out the Guardian out of their deck, but it means they're not going to be getting value on the Invocation, uh, which in a mirror matchup is a big, big deal. Um, You'll, you'll see why. So Cynthia is going to be a card you're going to start seeing a lot of, uh, assuming Hyperthin still sees play. And I don't see why you wouldn't play Hyperthin. It's just a really, really good deck right now. Super consistent. Lots of points in round three. Um, the other nice thing about Cynthia is it's a card you can play in round one against uh, non-Hyperthin decks. Technically, you can actually play it against Hyperthin decks in round one because they're still going to have to... They're, they're going to have to get rid of the card, which means they're going to have to play it from hand. Uh, and it just means that they're not thinning to zero, so they'll have to keep like a special in their deck, uh, which isn't too hard, so keep that in mind. If you do play it in round one, or this gets played against you in round one, and you're playing a hyperthin deck, you can still be okay. The idea is you keep something like Diplomacy, Assassination, Remedy, basically any special in your deck. Um, and then when you get to the end of the game, you have a special and Tibor in your deck. This way, when you play Yennefer, uh, Yennefer is only a unit so you still hit the t where you get the full value vogelforts can only pull out a unit so you get full value and then zarthesius is a 50 50 so that one you you do kind of have to just hope for the best uh but the other two you can guarantee if you think ahead and keep a special in your deck instead of a unit so uh if, if cynthia is played against you uh do keep that in mind um so yeah it's a great tech i would advise to play this in round three against hyperthin um Another nice thing is vampires are very good in this meta, uh, and Nagelfar is a card that people are playing, and Cynthia kind of counters that because, well, it shows the two golds and Cynthia putting Guardian in your opponent's deck. Guardian is actually a gold, so it does mess that up. Um, and Poet is a card that they're experimenting with right now. So uh, Cynthia is actually pretty good in this meta, and it's a proactive play. It's just a good card. I highly recommend you playing this card. Um, the drop is we dropped uh, a Sire for it, and... Typically, a sire was used for Roach. Uh, sometimes you would play Tibor early, and then you would a sire back into your deck. You don't want to do this. Never play Tibor early because this card exists now. Uh, if you play Tibor early and your opponent plays Heatwave, you lose. That's it. You lose. That's just game over. Um, unless the rest of their deck is complete garbage, you're going to lose the game because all your big power plays aren't power plays anymore. Uh, yeah, so don't play Tibor ever. Uh just don't do it. Heat Wave is a scary card. You'll just lose the game. Um, so that's why I don't really mind cutting a Sire. But yeah, if you do want to run the uh, Golem instead of Tibor, uh, go ahead and upgrade Peter to an Asire. Uh, Roderick is for thinning. Experimental Remedy is just an okay tactic. I suppose you could upgrade this to a Sire as well. You can do a Peter or Experimental Remedy. It's up to you. Your preference. Uh, Brigades for thinning. Diplomacy is a nice tactic. Uh, it's okay. Assassination, removal, attorney Josh removal, and then these are your fours for your um, portal. It plays the same like any other hyper thin Nilfgaard deck. Uh, you want to get your thinning done uh, in round one, typically. If you lose coin flip, don't go too aggro on it. What I mean by this is you don't necessarily want to play Vigo and portal in round one. Uh, sometimes you want to save it for round two and bleed a little bit in round two, uh, especially against like engine decks, uh, Northern Realms, or maybe Squayatal with Fav Water. Uh, just because if you go into a round three against Francesca with double water with leader um, and they have some form of tall removal, you might be in trouble. So you do probably want to bleed some of those matchups, uh, the, the engine more reliant matchups. Um, yeah, and then thin your deck, get to round three, play Yennefer, play Zarthysius, and then Vogelforge, uh, your lowest card, and pull out Tibor. Uh, mirror matches are a lot of fun because Invocation makes the matchups really wonky uh, i actually have a mirror matchup in one of the games that i'm gonna show you today and yeah it was probably one of the more fun games i've had with hyper thin just because you kind of have to think outside the box and uh yeah i don't really want to spoil it so without further ado i hope you guys enjoy the deck enjoy the gameplay and i'll see you guys on the next one Mm-hmm. 
You will over thin? No, I won't. Because Invocation adds a card to the deck. As good as dead, that lot. The senses can be fooled easily. Is it a good idea to downgrade a card by two and put the goal that banishes three cards from graveyard? Or what matchup? Full test? Kill the vampire, I guess. Fran? No, not worth. Yeah. Pretty big. I strive above all to be just. I kind of wish I had an invocation here. I could roll for it. Wow. Pretty lucky. I can put Invocation back, but then I don't Hyper Thin. Magic dies. This world dies with it. How do you like Observer? It's good. I think, yeah, it's good. It's gonna be big for Challenger. Does Invocation proc Deathwish? Shouldn't. <laughs> okay. Nothing will stop us. Your attention, please. I shall now speak. We know the mysteries of time and space. We lost? Why? Is there Observer only for PCs? Yeah, because mobiles don't have the ability to run it. How do you get YouTube to come and record you? What? For you, my friend, always. I don't understand. Uh. 
Hey Arnold, I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, it lol. I mean, people. Wait, he has the same title as me. He yoinked it. He yoinked it. Is there any monster card that does two damage to two ones? I guess we'll find out. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it can if he kills it, I suppose. Forktail? Yeah, Forktail does. It's a good Vilga Forge target. Why? Okay, I mean, I'm okay with that. Do you agree with something like this, or would you prefer them to improve the 3D models? Oh, the Thornbreaker? I actually don't like the Thornbreaker representation. I like the more recent one where they have, uh, where they're parallel to each other, side by side, instead of like this, or like slanted or whatever. There will be rain or frost, perhaps? Death wish meta never. Yep, basically. Or right, later. It's good. Looks good. Do you think Igor's nerf was necessary when DJ got balanced? Uh, it prevents them from accidentally breaking the game when they introduce future cards. Right? It looks like CDPR was taking... Like... It, it seems like CDPR is covering their butt for all future cards. Right? This way, if they don't test every single interaction, it's going to be harder to break the game. Right? That's why they're limiting all leaders uh, within their own faction, right? So that if they introduce a new special and it's broken with Francesca, uh, that won't happen if it's a neutral. Whereas when they make a Squiatal special, they should test for it. An ill wind. Remember when Deathwish was 20 points carryover? Deathwish? You mean Neckers? Yeah, pretty good. We have to win round one, otherwise we risk getting blown out by Scorch. The common people. I count for them. You don't think he's completely trash now? Who? You annoy me. Who's not complete trash? Igor? Oh, yeah, he's complete trash. I like to improvise. So he'll probably get buffed in a future patch, make him like a peach cheaper or something. I don't want to play this unless I have to, because I want to bleed a little bit. Well, 
Well, this is the time where I slam it because he won't be able to catch up next turn. His best card here is Isengrim. I don't even want to play this. I don't know. Maybe he plays pro. We can yoink pro. But the best card in this deck is Isengrim and Shiru. Shiru will kill itself. Isengrim, I don't need. All right, we smash and pass here. It's worth a ton because the sergeants get double buffed. We're up 20. Yeah, I guess not 20, but pretty close. This is Elven land. Really? You can do this in one? Your kind dies. Isengrim is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus 6, 14, 15, 16. Uh, I guess he can. And it's potentially even more with call plus two. Okay. I guess we're passing. I accidentally hovered over cards. What is the sorcery? Yeah, there's switch overlay now. It's really nice. We were not the ones to start this war. Okay. Why did he ping the one? Uh, to play around... I don't remember the card, but it's a tactic. Or maybe it's alchemy, actually. It, uh, heals a unit by... It heals a unit and then goes plus four. It plays around that card. I don't remember the name. Ointment, yeah. Plays on ointment. Which is typically correct. It's not a bad play. If he bleeds us, we're in trouble. We have some bricks, but I doubt he'll bleed. Yeah. How do we mulligan this? Having Prince or whatever, Roderick's on hand's pretty bad. Well, technically, I don't have to mulligan anything. I just need to... Roderick hits this, into this, into this. Right? Like, the only way it goes south is... I roll. These two are shown. I play this, I get full value, and then Zarth is a 50-50. Which isn't too likely. Mm, a highly curious case. Roll this before the diplomacy. Use Calvi? No, that's what my le that's what uh this is for. Take the full. We wanna kill all the elves player on Isengrim. Use the skin for Juan Calvi. It's one of the best skins in the game. I don't have it unlocked. Just 
Kispar and me. You shall hear out what I have to say. Okay. Hail the blood. I think we go ahead and play this next turn. I'm trying to think of a scenario where, like, I invo and then guarantee it with one Calvi into MO, but he'd have to play a unit lower than three, and that's not very likely. Okay. There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. So we have to try to play around Scorch at least a little bit. Okay. Eight. It's not terrible. Got synergy. Pog champ. Pretty good. All. Looking at white oak. Poison. Malayan. Okay. Follow me this way. I'm a little worried about Scorch, but I can't really play around it. Ooh. Well, we just played around it. We can't line these up with leader. And people are saying Nilfgaard is the worst deck. Nilfgaard is still tier one. I don't know, is this last card Scorch? So, if his last card is Scorch and I do this, I lose. But doing it offensively... It's a four, or a four. I think his last card is just Oak, right? Gigni? Perhaps. But I don't think I win. If his last card is Scorch and I sack the four, I still lose unless it rolls like a Doomsayer. So the correct play is still to roll the one. You mistake stars reflected in a it needs to go front row. I mean, we still lose to Scorch, but... Pro and Scorch, it's kind of hard to play around that. It's impossible, actually. Yeah, it's just oak. No reason to get greedy. What do you yoink in the mirror? Probably Yennefer, right? Or Zarth. Yeah, you, you yoink Zarth. The uh, mirror's gonna be interesting. Nothing will stop us. Mm -hmm. I beat Fran with vampires because my opponent miscounted bleeding. Yeah, a lot of people are miscounting bleeding and Oriana. Pretty common thing that's happening right now. Alright, this is a song that was requested. What the? 
I can't. To whom I can entrust my oh, wait. I mean, yeah, I guess. It breaks my Vigo, but I can just play Vigo and pull like a sergeant or something. Boat skip. What 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 are they saying, chat? Out of the way, rabble! A clever maneuver. The senses can be fooled easily. Don't you dare skip this. I, I wasn't planning on it. Wait a minute. If you offensive Vilg, you just win? Maybe I shouldn't have thinned everything. You shall hear out what I have to say. I live to serve you. Do I play another card? If I don't play another card, it plays around Vilgi. But I'd have to leave a unit on the top. I don't know. Oh, I like that play. Yes. What is it? Let's see if this works. I don't think I can play around it. Yeah, it's kind of cute. He can diplomacy a brigade. Yeah, but he has to high roll it. Is Blavikin in your deck? Not in this deck. Vilgi it? I mean, okay, you might be like, forehead Vilg is terrible, but it's it's not actually that bad. Because if I Vilg, I can 
Yen Con, I can invocation it back into my deck so I have two T-Boys. So that if he offensively Vilga for it, I can only hit one unit. And we have the other one still in the deck. Like, it's not that bad of a play. I never miss. Do it? I might. Don't need to do it yet, though. The problem is it's RNG, right? But, whatever. <clears throat> ah, you can roll Brigade off of this. An interesting choice. <laughs> Nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. <laughs> okay. It worked. My play worked. I'm happy. You're signing his shit made it a 50-50? Well, that's why when he played the brigade, I ripped it immediately. Good luck keeping a unit alive. I mean, I just slammed Zarthisius. It's really simple. He can't kill it. If he Vilgaforts it, it just replaces with T-Boy, right? Also, I can always just Juan Calvide into a T-Boy. Should that laugh be bleed Francesca? If your hand is really good, yes. If you have like a full gold hand, if you have a lot of bronzes, then no. But if you go to a long out three, you're not going to win either, so you probably have to bleed. You mistake stars reflected in a pond for the night sky. Okay. Oh, he's going to invo it? He's gonna invo it into his deck? <laughs> so meme. I never err in my predictions. Hmm. Like he can't pull it. He doesn't have a leader anymore. Shit, it's top card, so I can't play it. <laughs> you best yield now. Ah. Has he played Zarth? I mean, we still do it. <laughs> what a weird game. His last card is Zarth. He puts it on top as a 50-50 Zarth. That's why we have to pull the T-Bore out. It's a zero point play, but it plays around the, the Zarth. What a silly game. <laughs>